Okay, we're now moving into the last section of Unit 1, uh, Section 1.6 on Kinetics. And in this first lecture, we're going to look at the rate equation. So by the end of this lecture, you should be able to work out the order of reaction and the rate equation from experimental data. You should also be able to calculate the value of the rate constant, K, and its units from the experimental data. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the rate equation for a reaction. So let's just look at a general reaction A plus B reacting to give us C. Now let's assume we've done some measurements and that showed that if we increase the concentration of each reactant independently we get a direct increase in the reaction rate. So, in other words, if we double the concentration of A, we double the reaction rate. If we double the concentration of B, we double the reaction rate. If we increase the, fact, the concentration of A by a factor of 3, the reaction rate will increase by a factor of 3. So, based on these measurements, we can see that the rate, and this is supposed to be a directly proportional sign, the rate is di directly proportional to the concentration of A times the concentration of B. And we can rearrange that as the rate equals small k times concentration of A times concentration of B. And this is the rate equation for this particular reaction. So anytime you're asked to write a rate equation, you're being asked to write something like this. And the small k is called the rate constant. And we'll see in a little while how to work that out. The other thing you can work out from the rate equation is the order of the reaction with respect to each reactant and the overall order of the reaction. So the order is the power number to which A and B are raised. So A is to power 1 and we don't put 1 in when it's just raised to power 1. If it's squared we put in a 2, cubed we put in a 3. So the order with respect to reactant A is 1. Similarly, the B is just raised to the power 1. So the order with respect to reactant B is 1. And if we ask for the overall order of the reaction, we just add up the order of each reactant. So it's 1 plus 1, it's 2. OK, let's look at another reaction. Instead of A plus B going to C, will be 2D plus E plus F react gives G. Now, based on what I said in the first slide, one would be tempted to say that the rate equation is rate equals K D squared E F based on the stoichiometry of the balanced equation. However, the rate equation in the last example was not based on the stoichiometry of the balanced equation. It was based on measurements. The rate equation is always based on measurements. So the rate Q equation cannot be deduced from the balanced equation. So this may be right or it may not be right. The only way to find out is to determine it experimentally. So I want to show you how we'd go about determining the rate equation for this reaction experimentally. So we do a series of experiments, four experiments. In the first experiment, concentration of all the reactants is one mole per litre. So we could carry out that experiment, measure the reaction rate, and let's say we've got an answer of 0 0.04 moles per litre per second. In the second experiment, we change the concentration of one of these reactants. So. In this case, we've doubled the concentration of reactant D. So let's see how that affects the rate of reaction. So the rate of reaction was increased. But notice it wasn't doubled. If it was doubled, we get 0 0.08. But it's actually increased by a factor of 4 by doubling the concentration. 
So that means the order of the reaction with respect to D has got to be 2. The rate is depending, dependent on the concentration of D squared. So if we double it, uh, that will, the effect that will have on the reaction rate is to increase it by a factor of 2 squared. So increase it by a factor of 4, as it has there. So experiment 1 and 2 tells us that the rate is proportional to d squared. In the third experiment, well, comparing it with the first experiment, all we've done is increase the concentration of E. We've doubled the concentration of E. And that has doubled the reaction rate from experiment 1. So the rate is directly proportional to the concentration of E. So experiment 1 and 3 tells us the rate is directly proportional to E. And in the fourth experiment, we're going to vary the concentration of F. So we've doubled the concentration of F. And that has had absolutely no effect on the concentration, sorry, on the rate of reaction. So the rate of reaction is not dependent on the concentration of F. So experiment 1 and 4 tells us that the rate is directly proportional to F to the power 0. And f to the power 0 is 1. So the rate does not depend on F. So we can write our rate equation. Rate equals k d squared e to the power 1 f to the power 0. Now you wouldn't normally leave it like that. Uh, normally you wouldn't bother writing in the 1. So it'd just be, and uh, you wouldn't just totally ignore this term because it's to the power 0. So the proper rate equation would be rate equals k d squared e. Okay, so the next thing you might be asked to do is actually to work out the value of k. So you can work out the value of k using any of these four experiments. You know the rate, okay, the rate's there, value of d is there, value of e is there, the only unknown is k. So you just pick one of these four experiments, stick it into this equation and work out the value of k. So. So what we want to do is rearrange that equation so it becomes the rate constant k equals rate divided by d squared e. And then we're going to feed in the values for experiment 2. If you want to check, redo it, use experiment 1, 3 or 4 and you'll find out you get the exact same answer. So for experiment 2, the rate was 0.16, concentration of d was 2, concentration of e was 1. So that comes to 0.16 divided by 4, which is 0 0.04. So that is the value of the rate constant. When you're asked to work out the value of the rate constant, it always says including units. Now, the strange thing about the units for the rate constant is it varies depending on the chemical reaction. It won't always be the same unit. You have to work it out in each individual case. So, I'm going to work out the units over here. So, this line here, the rate, 0.16, was measured in moles per litre per second. I know that from the table in the previous slide. Okay. And that was then divided by the concentration of D squared. D was in, the concentration of D was in moles per litre. Because it's squared, it becomes moles squared per litre squared. And the units for E was moles per litre. Okay. So we then want to simplify these units. So we can cancel out the moles per litre there with the moles per litre there. And we can't cancel anything else out. So we've got S to the minus 1 up the top mole squared per litre squared down the bottom. When we bring these up to the top, it changes from moles squared to moles to minus 2, and it changes from L to minus 2 to L squared. So the units are moles to minus 2, litre squared, and the S to minus 1 just stays as it is. So that's the units for this rate constant. You're going to have to do this every time you work out a rate constant. So, 
A rate constant 0 0.04 moles to minus 2 litres squared per second. And we could rewrite the rate equation as the rate equals 0 0.04 d squared e. OK, here's another example. We've got x, y and z reacting to give whatever. We've carried out four experiments and we've been asked to obtain the rate law for the equation for the reaction. Okay, so the rate equation is going to be rate equals k x to some power y to some power z to some power so let's just put a little question marks in there okay so looking at this we have to work out what's the power for x y and z well let's try and work out what it is for x first of all so we want to find two experiments in which the only thing we've changed is the concentration of x so where are we Okay, experiment two and three. Okay. Y is 0.6 in both cases. Z is 0.3 in both cases. The only difference is we've doubled the value of X. And how has that affected the rate? Well, the rate is exactly the same in each case. Okay. So... Experiments 2 and 3 tell us that uh, it's x to the power 0. Okay, x does not affect the rate of reaction. Okay. Let's go with this. Okay. Let's look at y then. So two experiments, which the only thing that changed was y. So experiment 1 and 2, x is 0.3, z is 0.3, y changes from 0.3 to 0.6. What happens to the reaction rate? Well, it increases from 0.054 to 0.216. So it's increased by a factor of 4, not a factor of 2. So that means that the rate is proportional to y squared. So experiment 1 and 2 tells us that it's going to be y squared and then for z if we compare 1 and 4 okay, we've doubled z and what x stays at 0 0.3 y stays at 0 0.3 and the rate doubles when we double the concentration of z it goes from 0 0.054 to 0 0.108 so 1 and 4 tells us that it will be z to power 1. Okay, so the rate will equal k x to power 0, I'll just miss out y squared z. Okay. So that's the rate equation or the rate law for that reaction. Okay, the follow-up question then is calculate the rate constant with appropriate unit for the reaction. So we know that the rate was k y squared z. So we rearrange that so it's k, the rate constant, equals. So it's the rate over y squared Z. Okay, so let's do it for experiment uh, one. So the rate was 0 0.054. Concentration of Y was 0.3. So 0 0.3 squared. Concentration of Z was 0 0.3. 
Okay, so that comes to, if you work that out, that comes to 2. What are the units? Well, the rate is in moles per litre per minute. Moles per litre per minute. Concentration is always moles per litre. So for y it's squared. So moles squared per litre squared. And for z it was just moles per litre. We then cancel this out. Moles per litre and moles per litre there cancel each other out. So the units become moles. I'm not going to fit it in there. Uh, let's write it down here. 2 moles to minus 2. L to minus 2 comes up here and is L squared. And per min just stays as it is. So that is the rate constant with appropriate units. Okay, here's a question from the 2016 past paper, and uh, it's quite a tricky example, but uh, see if you can do that yourself, then I'll work through the answer. So, you're given uh, three different experiments, how the Cl2 and OH- concentrations changed, and how it's affected the rate. So firstly, you have to work out the order of reaction with respect to the ClO2, then the order of reaction with respect to the hydroxide ion, then write the overall rate equation for the reaction, then calculate the value for the rate constant K, including the appropriate units. So pause the tape, have a go at yourself, then I'll run through the answer. So the first thing we had to do was to work out the order of reaction with respect to the concentration of ClO2. Now to do that, if you compare these two experiments, because the hydroxide ion concentration hasn't changed, the ClO2 concentration has doubled. How has that affected the rate? Well, the rate's gone up by a factor of four. So it's got to be ClO2 squared. And the second thing we had to do was work out the, the order uh, of the reaction with respect to the hydroxide ion. So in that case, we'll look at these two because ClO2 concentration is the same for these two experiments. The only thing that's changed is the hydroxide ion concentration. What makes this a slightly tricky and unusual example is that they haven't just doubled the hydroxide ion concentration, they've increased it by a factor of three. Now, if the order of the reaction with respect to hydroxide ion is zero, then we wouldn't affect, have, have any effect on the rate. The rate has changed though, so it's not zero. If it was directly proportional to the hydroxide ion concentration, so the order was one, we would have increased the concentration by three, we would increase the rate by three. And indeed we have increased the rate by a factor of three, so the OH minus got to be to the power one. If it, if it had been to the power two, then Increasing it by a factor of 3 to the power 2 would be 3 squared, so the rate would increase by a factor of 9, which of course it hasn't. So, to answer the question, the order with respect to ClO2 is 2, and the order with respect to the hydroxide ion is 1. So, you're then asked the next question to write the rate equation. So, the rate would be the rate constant K times ClO2 squared OH minus, okay? It wouldn't be wrong if you had OH minus Cl2 squared. That would be perfectly right as well. And the last question, you had to work out the value of K. So rearrange the equation. K is the rate divided by ClO2 squared OH minus. So let's pick the first experiment. The rate was 2.48 times 10 to negative 2. The 
ClO2 concentration was 6 times 10 to the minus 2 squared and the hydroxide concentration was 3 times 10 to the minus 2 and that comes out at 230 and then if you run through the units you find that once again it comes out at moles to minus 2 litres squared per second so it's kind of annoying me that by coincidence the units in the three examples you've done so far have all been moles to minus 2 L2 although this is varied between per second and per minute but don't think it was always going to come out like this you have to work it out in each individual case so by now you should be able to work out the order of reaction and the rate equation from experimental data. You should also be able to calculate the value of the rate constant k and its units from experimental data.